Greetings teachers and teacher librarians, this is Dave Track here uh, to fill you in on some small changes to using your 3D printer. So by now, your school has a Ditto Pro 3D printer and you've hopefully had an opportunity to try printing with it and maybe even sliced a few files using Tinkerine Suite, preparing those files to print. Uh, but you may have noticed that sometimes Tinkerine Suite can be a little bit fiddly and it does tend to crash on Mac devices. And that's not a problem with you, that's just something that has happened in the programming of the of the Tinkerine suite. But Tinkerine now has a solution to solve all of our problems, and that is a new system called Tinkerine Cloud. So they've been working on this for some time, and it is now ready to go. It's fairly user-friendly, and it's a good alternative to using the old Tinkerine suite. It's all kind of ready to go and in one. So Tinkerine Cloud runs in your web browser. You can use any browser just about, whether it's Chrome or Safari or uh, even Firefox, you should be fine. And to get there, you're just going to want to head over to tinkerine.com. This is the website where you can order your supplies and you're hopefully somewhat familiar with it. But from tinkerine.com, I'm going to go to the home page here. This is the home page. And if you scroll down, you'll notice that right over here is the Tinkerine Cloud button. And the very first time you use it, you're going to need to sign up. And signing up is not too complicated. You'll just probably want to make one account for your school, sharing an email address and a little bit of information. I wouldn't suggest setting this up for all of the students in your school who are going to be printing. You might want to sort of manage your workflow and just have one workstation with one account. But that is up to you. And once you're in this place, uh, so you click over to Tinkerine Cloud, you can learn a little bit about more about what it is and how it works. Uh, it's very similar to the old Tinkerine suite, but I'm just going to launch Tinkerine Cloud by pressing this button, and now I'm in. And now it's going to show me my library of 3D files that I've already prepared. So they're now saved in the cloud, and I can download them and print them if I want to. But really, our focus today is actually on slicing a file. So I'm going to press the little button at the top here that says slice, and we see our old familiar friend, the sort of bed of our 3D printer, and we can move around. So it's just like it used to be, same kind of system as the old Tinkerine suite, but small difference is that it's happening in the cloud. So I'm gonna pop over to the type of printer. I have a Ditto Pro 3D printer. Most of you do. I don't think anybody's got a Ditto Pro R right now, so I'll press that. My filament size is default. My resolution on my print, I want a, I want a nice looking print, so I'm gonna go with medium. My infill is going to be sparse. That's pretty common. I got two walls, no support, no brim. I'm feeling pretty good. And now all I need to do is drag my file onto the bed so I can print it. So I'm just going to shrink my window and I'm actually gonna just drag and drop my file. So I've got a mug here that was designed to uh, be drinkable. It's for a druid or a person playing Dungeons and Dragons as a druid. So I just dragged the file into the bed here and it's going to take a short moment to load the file. So the very first time you do this, you might drag a file and it doesn't look like anything's happening. You'll see my bed is empty. I've dragged the file over what's going on. Boom, there it is. Now we're ready to go. So it takes a little bit of time to make sure that it has dragged over successfully. So here we are. My print is on the bed. I can see this gray grid is showing me where the print is. It looks like this print will actually print just fine. I think I'm just away from the edges of the bed. But if I had some concerns, I can rotate my object clicking the little rotate button here, and I'm going to rotate it slightly this way so that the handle will print successfully. We're good. If I wanted to move it around, I can go up here. If I wanted to scale it up and down, I can go there. Everything's looking good. I'm happy with my settings, and I'm just going to hit slice. And this is the whole reason I wanted to give you a, a little video, is that once you hit slice, it's going to take a, a little while to do it. And that is not a problem with you. That just is the slicing software doing its work. So I've pressed slice, nothing's happening. I'm freaking out uh, and it may take a little while. I set a timer the last time I sliced a print this big. It took a full two minutes. And so just note that the wheel is spinning. And so this is a great time to go, you know, 
do something else for a minute or two. You can go make yourself a cup of coffee or go uh, relabel a book spine or something. Uh, it will take a bit of time, but once it's done, you'll be happy and ready to print. So I'm gonna cut to once it's sliced. There we go, my print is ready. We can see here, I'm just gonna expand my window. We can see that it is now sliced. All the layers are visible and this is what it will look like. I can scroll down on the little bar at the bottom to see each layer as it goes up. This is helpful because I can see if any problems have occurred. Right now, this print is looking real good. I'm quite happy with it. And now I'm ready to save. So if I just press that save button, it will download the G code file to my downloads. And then I just chuck that on the SD card and I can print it in the 3D printer. So it's the same old software, just small changes because it's in the cloud. Uh, they will be adding a progress bar to help you know that, okay, your file is loading and the slicing is happening. Uh, that is going to be a feature perhaps in a month or two. By the time you watch this video, it may have already been fixed. But if not, just know that as you're doing things, it may take a few seconds to a minute to complete what it is you're trying to do. It is working, you haven't broken anything, and if you are patient, this will be much more helpful, I think, in the long run than Tinkering Suite used to be, and overall, Tinkering Suite was pretty darn good. So notice, this print is gonna take me 22 hours and 31 minutes down here in the bottom left, and it's gonna use 228 grams of filament. So all these features should be familiar from how you used Tinkering Suite before, and I hope that this is helpful, and I hope you're able to print some successful prints. Best of luck, and of course, if you have any questions, just reach out anytime. Thanks so much.